I had gotten a, I had gotten a, two concussions in a row, and I think I was in a, I don't know, I was about 16 or 17, and um, the doctors told me to take a year off, to not have any contact. And there was a kid in my class in my school who was going doing acting, and you know, and he asked me to do a play, and I, I, I had no idea. And uh, so I, he talked to me into doing this play, and I thought, well, this is better than getting up at five in the morning and right. running the Lagos Country Club, where Ali would get up <laughs> and run every day. And uh, you know, back then it was it was a ritual to, to you know to do your road work before the sun came up, and and. Uh, you know, this acting thing I thought was a lot easier than the grind at the gym. And I was very undisciplined uh, young man. And uh, I had a tr I had trouble just listening to anybody. And um, Did you listen to Seacat? I listened to her, but I, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to listen to my boxing trainers. And uh, Why did you listen to her? Why did I listen to Sandra? Oh, yeah, what was it about that? You know, I said to myself, I'm going to give myself five years to see if this acting thing is any uh, good. I said the same thing. I said, I'm going to give myself one year. Yeah, so I was living at the time at this welfare hotel down on uh, 8th Street. And there was, a, there was an old man behind the desk who was a big theater buff, and he would give me books to read. I had no idea who Marlon Brando was or... Uh, Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams, you know. I knew who Bojack was, Sonny Liston, <laughs> Emil Griffith, you know, Roberto Duran, yeah. James Dean. I didn't know who the fuck he was. So it was like he would you give weren't me, a, You weren't a movie goer. No, not at all. You weren't a movie watcher. No. And I was working construction at the time. I, had a, on a, I, I worked on a construction crew on a jackhammer. And I remember after work one day I had my jeans on. I think I only had two pairs of jeans and three black T-shirts. And I showed up at the hotel and... This elderly man, who, older man who worked at, behind the desk, Carl, he was all done up, like, you know, all really dressed up. And I, he says, we're going to the theater. And I said, okay, let's go. He goes, you can't go to the theater like that. Yes. <laughs> you know, I had the dirty jeans or the, just from my construction job. Put on some proper clothes. I didn't have any proper clothes. He no, dressed, me, he dressed <laughs> me up. And uh, he actually died this year at 100. You know, he kept, we've, kept, we've kept in touch. And he was 100 years old, Carl Montgomery. So you go, you go to the theater with him? I went to the theater and saw a play with him. It was Ralph Richardson and John Gilgood. Uh-huh. It was okay, and, you know, it, was, it didn't rock my boat. It wasn't Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston, you right. know. Right. It was a whole different world for me. And uh, so I'd go to the acting classes, and I, I think it was about a year and a half or two years that I would go, but I wouldn't get up and do anything. I would just sit there and watch other people. And actually, Treat Williams and Christopher Reeves, God bless his soul, were both in the class. And they'd get up there and they'd get all, you know, emotional and, you know, and, and do all this stuff. And I thought, I can't. Because, you know, being on the street, you can't. My other job was I was running a massage parlor on 42nd Street. I was in charge of the Flyboys. I had these young Puerto Rican fl kids that would, you know, wanted to make some money. And I'd give them sacks of flyers and they'd hand them out to, you know, customers and my job was when the pimps came over they would take the flyers from the young puerto rican kids and throw the flyers away because they had their girls work in the street yeah so my job was go over to the pimps and i would say leave my fucking fly boys alone and if they didn't get it i'd open my coat and show them the shit and they got the message wow so, so it was the know, work you were doing. Well, it was weird because that— You got off I'm, the jackhammer. I'm do, yeah, right. You got <laughs> to a different jackhammer. Yes. The street life and then acting class clashed so. It was so it was because I had to keep—you got to keep a certain face on the street. And to go into acting class and become vulnerable right. it was hard for me to— uh, But you auditioned for the studio. Yeah. And they let you in very quickly— Correct? If I read correctly. I got in very quickly. And, and uh, they said your audition was one of the best auditions they'd seen in 30, 30 years. years. Well, Kazan said that to me. Kazan. And when I finally knew who Kazan was, what? I finally realized it was. Isn't that amazing? Well, there's a story to that. Um, I uh, I said to my acting coach, Sandra, one day, I, you know, because I used to see Al Pacino at the studio and um, and Chris Walken and Harvey Keitel and, you know, guys that I really admired and. I said to 
Sandra one day, can I ever be as good as like Al Pacino? And she said, you have to work harder than the rest. And I understood that. And, but because I, I, I related, I could understand that in the re relation to boxing. You know, if you, you don't win the fight on the night of the fight. You win the yeah. fight the 10, 12 weeks right. that you do your you road work. Yeah. You know, so when you're sitting in the dressing room and they're wrapping your hands and the door opens and you hear the crowd, that's when, you know, that's, where, that's when I would get fright. F the fear would come in. Right. But if I did my, home, my, my road work, you know, all I'm thinking about is I'm that, ready. That, that prick in the other room, yeah. he didn't work as hard as I yeah. did. So with the acting, I, I would literally go there after my jobs, late at night, I, she get, I got a call to a key to the studio. And I would walk in there. What I would do is there was a bum on the street. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, but I would pay him like $5 to read lines with me. He could hardly read, but I'd buy him a big giant bottle of beer. And he would, as good as he could read, he would read the other lines. And I would, when you're in the actor's studio at night, like around 1, 2 in the morning or 12 at night, you know, and you start thinking about you know, who's been there before you, who's walked on that floor before you. You know, it's 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 a it's a it's a it was a really beautiful feeling. It's mind blowing. It was mind blowing. And to be there all at night and I was there every fucking night. And I would work and I'd work harder and I'd work harder. And then did you eventually you got up in front of people? Eventually I got up in front of people in the How'd seat. How'd that feel? It was okay because Sandra knew my background from fighting. And she also knew that I had a I had a tremendous amount of guilt for quitting the boxing. That you walked away. I felt like a coward that I quit, yeah. And she had me do, you know, it was a, a Stanislavski method type of acting, of course, and she had me do a uh, sense memory of me in a place that I love to be. And what I was doing was lacing up my boxing shoes. And I remember because Ali was at the gym at the same time, and Jimmy Ellis and Jerry Quarry, Oscar Bonavena, all the great ones, you know. And I remember I had gotten these white boxing shoes that were the same ones that Ali had. And so when I did my sense memory and and then I had this monologue that she had me do and I was lacing up the shoes and it just, everything kind of just, I, I cracked and it was like, and she had me, she, she went, say the lines and it was, and then I understood what the work is and how to make it personal and how to tap into an emotion and then be able to, to, to use it in, in, a, in a scene, in, in the work. So here's but, – but what's interesting to me is when you show up in films and you come across as very vulnerable and very tender – you know, you're a handsome, leading man. The The first movie that you star in is what? Pope of Greenwich Village? Diner, Pope of Greenwich Village. D and was, Diner, which is an ensemble. The, the nine and a half weeks right, no, I deal. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that girl who's in that movie, with what's her name again? I remember her, the blonde. The blonde Georgia. chick with the big the lips. Blonde from, yeah, the, with the, the blonde with from the, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. 